So now we'll be taking our final example, which will be the derivative of cotangent of x using the limit definition of the derivative. So we know that a derivative can be taken using the limit as h approaches 0 for f of x plus an infinitely small increase in x denoted by h, subtracting off your initial function and divide the entire thing by h. So in this case, our f of x is going to be is equal to cotangent of x. And this is by far probably one of the toughest ones out there, requires the most algebraic manipulation out there. Our f of x plus h will be cotangent of x plus h. So now we're ready and we can plug things into the formula. So we want to take the limit as h approaches 0 for cotangent of x plus h minus cotangent of x all divided by h and what we want to do here is we want to split cotangent up into its two constituent functions which are sine and cosine or rather so, uh, sine and cosine exactly however they are inverse so cotangent is cosine divided by sine of x so we can write this out as the limit as h approaches 0 for cosine of x plus h over sine of x plus h minus cosine of x over sine of x. All of this divided by h. And just as we did in previous examples, we want to join these under a common denominator and drag whatever is in the denominator of the numerator into the denominator. So we will take the limit as h approaches 0, we will multiply this by this and this by this. So we will be left with cosine of x plus h multiplied by sine of x minus cosine of x times sine of x plus h. All of this divided by sine of x plus h times sine of x, furthermore divided by h. Now we can drag the denominator of the numerator into the denominator, and we will take the limit as h approaches 0 for this whole mess, cosine of x plus h times sine of x minus cosine of x sine of x plus h all divided by h multiplied by sine of x plus h times sine of x. And what makes this limit so difficult is we'll have to make two substitutions, one of them for the addition of sines and one of them for the addition of cosines. So let's make some room because we're going to need a lot of it. The addition of sines can be written out as sine of x plus h is equal to sine of x times sine of h, no wait, cosine of h plus sine of h cosine of x. The addition of cosines, cosine of x plus h, is equal to cosine of x times cosine of h minus sine of x times sine of h. So we will be making these substitutions wherever it is that we see cosine of x plus h and sine of x plus h in the numerator. So this will be substituted with this and this will be substituted with this. So we will take the limit as h approaches 0 and I'm gonna need to write pretty small for this. I may not even have space for this. We want to substitute in cosine of x plus h. This will become cosine of x times cosine of h minus sine of x times sine of h. All of this multiplied by sine of x. Then we want to subtract off cosine of x multiplied 
by sine of x plus h, which is this portion right over here. So we'll multiply sine of x times cosine of h plus sine of h cosine of x. All of this divided by this little mess down here, which will be h times sine of x plus h times sine of x. Now what we want to do here is we want to make our distributions. We want to distribute this sine of x to whatever is left over here. So we'll take the limit as h approaches 0 for sine of x multiplied by cosine of x cosine of h minus sine of x times sine of h. So this will become sine of x times cosine of x times cosine of h minus sine squared of x times sine of h. And then we want to do the exact same thing here, where we want to distribute this cosine of x into this mess. So we want to subtract off sine of x, cosine of h, cosine of x. And this negative sign also gets distributed, so this will become negative sine of h, cosine squared of x. And this is where we get to clean it up a little bit, or rather a lot. It's going to make it a lot nicer right here, here and now. h multiplied by sine of x plus h times sine of x. And here we can spot a couple of common factors that can be crossed out immediately. So here we have sine of x times cosine of x times cosine of h minus sine of x times cosine of x times cosine of h. So these two are gone. They cancel each other out completely. So we will be left with the limit as h approaches 0 for negative sine squared of x sine of h minus sine of h cosine squared of x. All this divided by h times sine of x plus h times sine of x. Now what I'd like to do here is factor out a sine h of the numerator. So if I were to do that, we would take the limit as h approaches 0 for sine of h multiplied by negative sine squared of x minus cosine squared of x. All this divided by h times sine of x plus h times sine of x. And here, this is one of the limits that we should be very familiar with at this point. The limit as h approaches 0 for sine of h over h will go straight to 1. Because this goes straight to 1, we can rewrite this as the limit as h approaches 0 for negative sine squared of x minus cosine squared of x over sine of x plus h times sine of x. And finally, what I'd like to do is factor a negative sign out of the numerator. So this will leave me with the limit as h approaches 0 for negative sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x over sine of x plus h times sine of x. And we know that sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is a trigonometric identity and that these two terms are simply equal to 1. So let's clean up. We're almost done here. So the entire numerator goes straight to 1 because a trigonometric identity says so. We're left with the limit as h approaches 0 for negative 1 over sine of x plus h 
times sine of x. And just as we did in the cosecant example, we will allow h to approach 0. So this will leave us with negative 1 divided by sine of x multiplied by itself. So this becomes negative 1 over sine squared of x. And negative 1 over sine squared of x can be rewritten as negative cosecant squared of x. So the derivative of cotangent of x using the limit definition of the derivative is negative cosecant squared of x.